If you're given a rectangular in integration to change to polar coordinates, you need to first know how to draw the shape of the domain that you're integrating. Uh, since this one has dy, you should think of this as y equals to this function and also y equals to 0. y equal to 0 is easy. y equal to 0 is just the x-axis itself. It's a horizontal line on the x-axis. But this other one, that's a little more mysterious, so let's investigate what this is. First, we want to square both sides to get rid of the square root. And square roots squared will cancel, and negative becomes positive. So you end up with y squared equals to 4x minus x squared. Move everything to one side. So let's say x squared minus 4x plus y squared equals to 0. And then uh, you should add 4 because uh, that's how you complete the square. So you take half of negative 4, which is negative 2, square that, that's 4. If you add 4 both sides, then this becomes a complete square, which is x minus 2 squared plus y squared equals to 4 is 2 squared. And this is actually a circle equation. So this is a circle centered at 2 comma 0. There's no shifting in the y direction, but you go two steps in the right if you have x minus 2 in place of x, right? So you have uh, centered at 2 comma 0. And then uh, you have, let's see, uh, radius is 2. So the graph you get is a circle of radius 2 centered at 2. So it's going to be a circle that touches the origin and it goes until 4. Okay. Uh, we, we also know that it's going to touch the origin because if you plug in 0, you get y as 0, right? So it passes through 0 comma 0. So that's the equation of the circle. However, if you go back to see the original equation, this says y is negative of a square root. If it's a negative of a square root, it will never be positive. So what this means is that it's not going to create the entire circle. It will only create the bottom half of the circle. And if you're curious to know why you don't get the full circle and you only get the bottom circle, well, one way to find out why would be to actually go backwards. If you start from this equation and you try to go backwards and solve it, after this point, when you solve for y, you get y equals to plus or minus square root of 4x minus x squared. And the plus one gives you actually the positive half, and the minus one gives you the bottom half. But in our case, uh, it's just the minus only, so it's just going to be... Uh, y equals the negative square root of 4x minus x squared. That will be just the bottom half circle. Okay, uh, so this starts from the bottom ha half circle and it goes up to 0 uh, or or the, uh, the horizontal x-axis. Okay, So you start from here, you end here. And because your x value goes from 0 to 4, it's from here to there. So it's really from this curve until this curve over the interval x equals to 0 to x equals to 4. So this is the domain that you're integrating. Okay, so now we can rewrite this as the integral over this domain uh, of x plus 3y dA. And what we need to do is to convert these things. So first, dA in polar coordinates is r dr d theta. Don't forget this. There's an r. 
right? Let's do a big exclamation mark because you need an R if you convert from dy dx to dr d theta. You need a factor of R. And uh, if you recall, x is R cosine theta and y is R sine theta. So you can just write R cosine theta plus 3R sine theta times R dr d theta. And now your job is to somehow figure out how this can be changed into the values of R and theta. Okay, so uh, let's continue on. Let's draw this picture again. And let's think about let's think about how to write this in terms of the polar. Uh, so we go back and r take this equation uh, or or this equation here, which says uh, you have x squared minus four x plus y squared equal to zero, describes this circle. Okay, actually it gives you the full circle, but uh, we'll we'll think about how to just get the bottom half later. Uh, so I need to convert this into polar. And to convert this into polar, you need several identities. Uh, and in this case, you just need two. One is that r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Uh, you probably know that r is square root of x squared plus y squared, right? Uh, but if you square this, you get, you get this, OK? Another thing is that x is equal to r cosine theta. So I can take x squared plus y squared and then rewrite r squared and then minus 4. Instead of x, I can write down r cosine theta. Okay, now uh, if you factor the r out, you end up with either r being equal to 0 or r minus 4 cosine theta equals to 0. This second one is r equals to 4 cosine theta. And r equals to 0 just gives you this origin, right? Uh, regardless of the angle, if your r is 0, you just end up having this point only. So this is not the one that you want. And rather, it's this one. And if you recall that uh, if you have r equals to some uh, length a times cosine or sine n theta, and if n is odd, you get rows with n petals, right, if n is odd. Okay. And uh, it will be rows with 2 n petals if n is even. Right? And in our case, it's just 1 times theta, so it's just rows with 1 petal. What's a 1 petal rows? It's just a circle. So uh, we, we know it has to be a circle because we started with a circle equation. Right? So this, this actually does agree. Uh, with what we wanted. This indeed gives you this circle. Since it has to create this, it's probably the circle that gives you the entire thing. But for us, uh, the theta, angle theta, goes from here until there. So think about rays that can be drawn from on, on this graph. So think about rays. So if you have some positive theta, it's like that. And the, if you increase the theta, uh, you see all of these rays don't have any uh, interaction or overlap with this bottom half circle, un un unless you start, unless starting from pi three pi over two. So f starting from three pi over two, the moment you pass three pi over two. There's some overlaps, right? And it's clear once you go here, because you start from 0 and you end at this curve, right? And you can go up to 2 pi. So from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, uh, these rays have some overlaps. And uh, so so that's, that's one thing you should write. So the first thing is that theta should be between 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. And uh, if you do have your theta between these, then uh, all these rays start from r equals to 0 to 
this curve at some point on this curve but what is this curve this curve here we just found it. it's r equals to 4 cosine theta so uh, you go from r equal to 0 to r equals to 4 cosine theta okay so we put that into the uh, r value so what did we have we had uh, uh, r cosine theta plus 3r sine theta times r dr d theta that's what we had and we just had to uh, put things in here right now one thing that you have to know is that when you have dr dr means uh, increasing in the in uh, so r is the distance from the center so if you have any point on the polar coordinate system the distance to the origin is r so if you slightly increase r you get a radial direction increase okay so to integrate something in dr direction that means you're trying to paint your given region radially so if you have this region and you're tr trying to paint this with dr inside that means you're painting it ra radially. So uh, imagine, uh, well, uh, imagine you're painting this region with a paintbrush and you're instructed to always start from zero and then you start painting in a radial direction. Okay, so it has to be a ray emitting from this center. That's what dr being inside means. Okay. And clearly, if you do this, then you see that you always start with r equals to 0. And then you end at this curve, right? And that curve is uh, this thing, r equals to 4 cosine theta. So you put 4 cosine theta. And then theta goes from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi. And that's it. That's how you uh, convert a polar uh, to convert rectangular into this polar coordinate integration. Okay, that was uh, pretty tough.